Hey everyone, this is Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. What I want to share with you today is what's called the feed saturation method of filling your pen. It's kind of a unique method. It's not the entirely the most practical way to fill your pen, but in certain situations, it may really be able to help you out of a bind. So let me go ahead and show you what that's all about, and uh, you can see if it's something that might be able to help you out. All right, so here we have the feed saturation method. I have kind of all my tools laid out for everything that I'm going to need. This is a method that might get you out of a pinch in certain scenarios. It's not something that you're going to be able to use on every pen, and it's not something that's really going to be ideal, honestly, for most situations. But in very specific situations, it will be able to help you out. Okay, so here's scenario one. You have a pen. Here I've got kind of my pen case with an assortment of pens. Um, scenario one is you might have an ink cartridge, okay, that has a, it's a proprietary cartridge, like this one is Lamy, okay, this one is the Pilot and Namiki. Um, if you want to use the ink that's in these cartridges in a pen that doesn't fit this cartridge, you can use this method. You can also use it if you have an ink sample vial of some kind or some other container where you can't fit the pen into the container. The last situation is if you have a bottle of ink, like so. This is a J.R. Bond bottle that's pretty shallow. The ink level is pretty low, low enough to the point where most pens cannot draw up from the bottle anymore. Okay, now if you have a cartridge converter pen, like this Lamy for example, if you have a cartridge converter pen, most of the time when you get into these situations, with the exception of the cartridge, if you're in the bottle, or the sample vial situation. You can take the converter off and you can usually dip it into the bottle and just suck it up through the converter and then reattach the converter to the back of the pen and that will get you out of the bind. However, if you have a piston fill pen or a lever fill or some other mechanism that doesn't have a removable converter, uh, for example, I've got my Pelican M800 here. This is a piston fill pen. I cannot remove the filling mechanism out of this pen. I have to fill it through the nib. So, I, I like, uh, let's see here, for this instance, I'm going to go from the bottle, okay? I don't have enough ink in here to be able to get it up to the point where I can suck it up through the pen, okay? Or the sample vial, this actually does fit in the sample vial, but there are other bottles out there where it will not fit in there, or you may have a really big nib that won't fit in there. Or if you want to get it out of the cartridge, here's what you do. This is called the feed saturation method. There's two ways you can do it. You can either do it with an eyedropper, like a medical type, you know, regular eyedropper. This is just uh, a bottle with some ink that I have in it. Um, you can use this eyedropper just like you would for an eyedropper fill pen, or you can do the method that I prefer, which is to use an ink syringe. The ink syringe gives you a little bit more control with the amount of flow that you're putting the ink into your pen. So I'm gonna prepare my little syringe. It's a blunt tip needle, not gonna do me any harm. This is uh, something that I put together specifically for um, purposes of using it for fountain pens. So here we go. I've got a Jerobon Verde Olive and I want to fill it up. I'm just going to get a little bit of ink in this syringe here. That's more than enough to fill my pen. So here is how the ink saturation, sorry, the feed saturation method works. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for you. Okay. So you can see what's going on. First thing I want to do is I want to take the piston and I want to, you can't see what's on the inside here, but this piston is going all the way down when I do that. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my syringe and I'm going to put some ink into the feed right there. I have now saturated the feed with ink. And then I just take and I reverse the piston so that it now draws that ink up into the pen. And then I just take a little more ink, saturate that feed again, and then draw the ink up into the pen. I'm going to try and change my light here so you can see a little better what's going on. Okay. Take a little more ink, saturate my feed, Take and draw that ink. You can see the ink being drawn into the pen. There you go. You can see the tines of the feed. 
Now all I'm doing is doing what I would normally be doing through a bottle, but just doing it in a very slow method. Basically outside the bottle. There we go. Keep on going. I'm almost at the end. This pen's got a pretty good capacity. Other pens will vary. And one more fill will do the trick. Probably do an overkill. I've made my point already, I know, but I just like to get things completed. And there we go. Okay, so now this Pelican is filled with Verde Olive. I didn't have to dip it in the bottle, didn't have to go into a vial or anything like that. And voila, I now have a filled pen. That is essentially the feed saturation method. Now, the reason that this works is because this pen has a feed with fins on it. If you have a pen such as the Lamy, for example, okay, I already broke this one out, but if you look at the feed on this one, it doesn't have fins on the feed. It has a little breather hole here, which that's the way that it fills through. Um, it's going to work a little differently than it did with the Pelican, but you can still sort of accomplish this method by filling it, the syringe directly into that breather hole and um, doing the same method where you have the piston and the converter and you're, you're just sucking it right up there. But like I said before, if you have a converter, you can take the converter off and go with it. But if you have another pen that's piston fill only or lever fill or whatever, it doesn't have fins in the feed, you can still kind of do that method through the breather hole. It's a little bit harder, it may not be worth your while, um, but that, that will get the job done. Okay, so if you're using an eyedropper, you can use it either with the bottle or you can do it with the sample vial. But if you're going to be filling it from an ink cartridge, you really kind of need the ink syringe. So that's kind of the only caveat to this method, is that the ink syringe is kind of key if you're going to use anything related to ink cartridges. Um, the reason that I like to use an ink syringe instead of the eyedropper is that the eyedropper, when you suck up the ink, you can see how much ink is going to come out in one drop. It's kind of a large volume of ink, and it's really kind of hard to control how much is going to come out and where it's kind of going to go. So I don't really like to use eyedroppers. If you're in a pinch and you need to use an eyedropper, you don't have a syringe, you can do this method that way. But I really prefer to use a syringe because you can get a much more precise amount. You can kind of put the ink exactly on the feed where you want it to go. And then you have a nice completed filled pen using the ink saturation method. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my video on the feed saturation method. If you have any questions, you can always email me at brian at Thanks a lot for tuning in, and right on.